Hi there, this is Fat Marrow with a follow-up to my last little video where I rather glibly uh, suggested it was easy to make a cube map and all that and to make a skybox. Um, since then I actually tried making another one and it turned out to be very far from straightforward so I thought I should probably, for the sake of honesty, uh, do a worked example of getting a panorama made and imported into Unreal. Uh, and I also realised I don't know all the answers, which uh, it came as a surprise to me also. Um, so, uh, earlier today I had the opportunity to go to the local park and it was overcast and I was looking for an overcast sky still um, and I'd made one but I wanted to make a better one. Um, so I'll come back to that but first let's just do some work examples with probably a lot of skipping and cutting because there's lots of very slow boring bits in the way. So uh, I went to the park and I broke all the rules I suggested last time. I, I had to pack light and work quickly because I was giving my daughter a push in the pram uh, being an excellent parent uh, neglecting her while I pissed about with cameras. Um, how are you doing? So uh, yeah, and I rushed it and I didn't follow these following bits of advice. I didn't level the tripod. I didn't have the means to quickly. My new camera now has a built-in spirit level, but basically I didn't spend any time doing that. Um, so it wasn't leveled. I didn't bracket the shots, which meant that I just did one shot at a single exposure. So I set the exposure so that the sky wouldn't burn out. By burning out, I mean have bits which are more white than white, where the level was maxed out at whatever maximum is, 255, whatever. Um, so I exposed for the sky and you get a bit of the a bit of the ground as well, but really that's not ideal. However, with today's modern cameras, and if shooting at ISO 200, so a nice low ISO, you do get enough uh, let's make that full screen. You do get enough detail that you get a reasonable exposure for the foreground elements. Um, there is noise, but it's not terrible. I mean, maybe it is, but that's good enough for my purposes. By the time you squish it down, hello, to um, 2000 pixels or whatever, you'll you'll lose all that noise in the, in the mix. Um, but anyway, back we go. Um, let's just get rid of you. Uh, so that's the exposure out of camera. So what I really wanted with the sky, so I don't care too much about the rest of it, but I might uh, process that too so that in case I want to have a, a sort of a tree line with overcast as well, I could use the sky separately. Um, I don't know quite where I'm going with this, but I'm going to go for one skybox with the trees in it. Um, there are some possibilities for doing HDR, where you do multiple exposures. So I only took the one shot, but I could still... What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I could still um, process each shot more than once and then combine them in some clever way to get a higher dynamic range in the picture. Um, I don't have the means to export HDR files, though I'm just wondering if the Photoshop plugin I've just got will do that. Um, because I skimmed out when I bought a new panorama stitching program. Uh, the, the basic problem is that there's very few options, and certainly very, very few, if indeed none, for free, for actually getting your source images like this, turning them into panorama, and producing the correct format to load into Unreal. Um, the literature I found suggests that uh, cube maps are really the only way to do that, and um, there's other ways to make them where you basically create a spherical or a cylindrical projection and then you create a cube in a 3D program and then do a manual projection onto the size and stuff like that. And there are videos on that if you want to find them, but uh, I find that a bit of a, an effort. Um, though I suppose once you've got it set up once you can run it again. So what I really want to do is just give this a minimal processing to even things out um, and to because if you process things heavily, it means that the photos may be dissimilar, especially around the edges. So if you vignette them or something, you know, it's going to go ter terribly wrong. So I want to get a uniform flat exposure. So really the main thing I want to do is go down and enable the profile corrections, which all this does is it reads what kind of lens took this. It was a 16 to 35 mil lens. Um, 
it uses standard information about that lens to unsquish it and to correct for the vignetting the lens does. So that is now fairly flat uh, and even. The exposure is pretty much okay for my purposes. Um, this one may have a bit of a headroom as it were, but you have to deal with the set as a whole. Um, there's things you can do, take down the highlights to give a more dramatic sky, um, but I think actually I want to keep that fairly neutral as that's the main thing. There's things you can tweak, so maybe that's the way to deal with, yeah, actually that's probably the way to deal with the foreground. So that actually makes a reasonably good uh, panorama, I think. Um, and it's sort of artificially giving it an HDR look by bringing up the shadows so much compared to the sky. I don't actually like the HDR look as it, as it is. Um, let's see, do you want more whites, less whites? It's hard to know where to go with that. Um, one thing I could tweak is the clarity. I mean, that's exaggerated, but, you know, it does give dramatic. A little bit of a tweak might work, but then there's the danger it sort of does non-linear stuff to the pixels and it might fox it when it's combining them. But oh, I'm tempted to put a little bit of clarity in there. Vibrance gives brings more the colours. It's like a, oof, again, a bit too much, but a little bit might just bring it to life a bit. But this is something you can do in post-processing. You can do this with a texture once it's loaded into Unreal, so you don't need to go crazy on the saturation side of things and on the contrast to a degree. Um, saturation is a less sophisticated version of Vibrance. Yeah, maybe not. So I'll leave those alone. The contrast, actually, um, it can normally give it a bit more punch, but in this case it's just darkening the foreground, which I want it to be lighter. So I want to have a fairly neutral contrast. Maybe just a touch more. Um, now the colour temperature, uh, I hadn't set that in camera to be a constant, so that might vary. Hopefully it won't. Um, yeah, there's a slight variation, and I don't have that variation at all. So I shall co copy the colour balance. I'm just going to change it so that it does register it as different, as custom, rather. I'm going the long way about this. So white balance custom, that should copy the actual values. Uh, exposure, I'm not going to change. So let me just copy everything and see what that does to the rest of them. So let's take this. Yeah. So that should hopefully work okay. Quite a nice dramatic sky. So I'm going to take the first, no, Library. I get very confused. I usually use two monitors, so uh, I get confused when I do it with one. Um, the first of my plan breaks will be to oh. uh, process these. So I'm going to come back once that's done. Boing! Right, so all the photos are processed, full size, um, which is far more than ample for the purpose of making the panorama. I mean, the resolution on these things can get crazy when you're stitching together full-frame uh, SLR shots uh, en masse. Um, so you see there are some flaws with this. I don't want any people in my backdrops. It's just, you know, frozen in time. It's really immersion-breaking. Uh, a few other things to be cleared up. I mean, there's birds there. They should probably go. Um, I don't want the background to be the focus of attention. Uh, also, some things change per frame, and how that's dealt with depends on the software. I've not actually got to the bottom of my new software on how to tell it which frame I prefer it to use in the case of a conflict. And you can see the tripod's really not level. Um, but because this is doing a sort of a, not 360, but a, a semi hemi hemisphere, semi blah, 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 half a sphere of the sky, it should figure out that, um, that there's a horizon and you can manually adjust it, I think, in the software, hopefully. It'd look terrible otherwise. As uh, plane, so that's going to be interesting to deal with. That's presumably moving across as we move across. Um, yeah, so benches, birds. I want to get rid of that. So I did one complete rotation that way. Did another rotation like that. There's something odd going on there, some sort of flare. Um, this lens is not good for lens flare, which is a shame because it's an L lens. It should be good. Hello, plane. Um, so that should hopefully capture most of that, and then just a couple at the end to make sure I've got the top.
I didn't bother going down, partly because my daughter was in the pram next to the tripod. I didn't think that would make a good backdrop. Well, it would, of course, make an excellent backdrop, but not for the purposes uh, here we are of this. In fact, is she in this at all? She must have been below the line of sight. There we go. Right, so next step is I'm going to run this program I just bought. Uh, I'm not giving any endorsements. I'm not saying this is good or bad. Um, I mean, I'll rant at it. I'll rant about everything. Um, and let's just input our source images. So I'll run with this program. There are other programs. Um, I'm not saying you should use this, uh, but I found very few programs that will do Panorama as well. Photoshop is not included in that list, um, which will also, uh, where am I going? Also um, produce cube, ma cube maps or anything even remotely resembling a cube map. So forgive all the extraneous bump, gump, rubbish. Um, right, so that's all of the files. And at any point, I'm liable to do a time lapse if this is getting boring. Uh, but that's the source material as output by Lightroom, is what I use. You don't have to use Lightroom. Um, it's just something people use in the photography business a lot. Um, handles raw photos, raw files, um, gives you a lot of options to tweak, which I don't need for these necessarily. Right, uh, you can do stuff to them individually. I've not, I don't know why that's there. Is that a glitch? It's a glitch. So I haven't bottomed out on the, all this stuff, but basically uh, I want to make ultimately a cubic panorama. I haven't quite decided my workflow, but the thing is that if I'm going to Photoshop stuff out, um, it's easy to do it in a different projection. Cylindrical is not good because this is going to be a fully, it's going to be a spherical projection. And this program doesn't convert cylindrical into other things. It does convert spherical into cubic if you reload it. And so what I did on another sky was to output a spherical, do my photoshopping, um, and then import it and re export it as a cubic. And that wasn't the end of the story, but I want some form of cubic projection. In this case, I think I might go for cubic because uh, the photoshopping I need to do is in relatively small patches. If you are photoshopping large patches of a projection, um, because things get stretched the more you go from the bottom or the side or whatever, it, it's very hard to do it um, without introducing distortions in the final product. But for little things like taking out a little bird or a plane or a person, I think I can handle that in cubic, so I'm going to give this a go. Uh, because you lose some information when you're converting from one format to another because there are parts of the image where things are stretched one way or stretched the other way and you lose some data. Um, let's go. Uh, I think this will be alright. It's probably going to complain it's out of memory. Uh, so like I said, I might go to time lapse. Any point. Um, yeah. Very good. Let's stare at this. It's it's a very odd progress bar. I've never seen that before. Um, this program has a lot of odd features. Uh, if you try and save a Photoshop image, um, you can select it from a list. You try and save Photoshop image, then it gives you the error, Photoshop image is not supported. So that was easier apparently than just not putting it in the list. Um, I think I used this program five, ten years ago when I was doing uh, Panoramas as uh, a professional photographer, and um, I did some quite nice ones. Well, I reckon so. Um, of a TV studio or two, that was quite fun. Um, here we go. But they've, I think, it's been taken over by somebody in China, and uh, in some ways it's probably working better. In other ways, it seems to have slightly lost some of the features that I used to know, made it more usable. Okay. I'm going to cut to this being finished. Kapow! Here we have a finished, and by finished I mean not finished, cube map. Um, so it's not the best way to visualize the panorama, but you can see it's basically stitched it together. Um, oh, we can preview it. Immersive view. Uh, so I see, I see a little, oh, way. Okay, yeah, this is one of the things I'm not mad on. It's a little bit Yay! Just... damn it! 
so it oh don't do right so um uh, it's apparently done an okay job at stitching pretty much everything doesn't seem to be a lot of work needed you can see the plane has confused it slightly um it's not a horizontal uh yeah it's not leveled so that's the only thing that really needs doing apart from taking things out um there is a feature which I think is this one. I don't want to add hotspots. I want to. I can't. Oh god. Because there's a way you can level it uh, in other projections and it's not letting me because I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, so maybe I'm going to have to do make the spherical and fix it. See, this is. This stuff just raises my blood pressure. It's just not. There's no easy way to do all these things. That's not going to pass muster. So bear with me. I'm going to click on spherical and it's going to think and think and think and think and then it's going to go runtime error. So uh, I'm going to come back when I got that running making a spherical panorama because this is too much fun. Bye. Shazam. So uh, I think I owe Pano Weaver a minor apology in that I had just moved all the source files to another directory um, so it got confused about that but the apology is offset by the fact that that's not what should happen if you can't find your source files I, ju I just you know it's fairly basic isn't it you write software you don't crap out if the source files not just anyway I, I'm very ranty it's just what I do uh, so this is the spherical projection um, and before I go any further, I made a note of things I was going to say before they get too far away. Uh, one thing on the saturation, when I was fiddling with that, you actually want the skybox, the, the ground bit of it anyway, to be not too saturated with colour anyway, because you certainly want it to have the appearance of being far away. Um, it breaks the immersion if your, your tree line appears nearer than the things in your level. Uh, and one thing that indicates distance is, is desaturation, a sort of mist effect. Uh, I'd say fog, but um, the Unreal fog they have now seems to me to not behave like the old fog. Uh, I find things look weirder with the fog on. Anyway, I, that's just me not using it properly. I digress as I do. Um, and the other thing is that this technique's not really very good for skies because skies do move, clouds do move, and actually, um, you know, why would you choose my rubbish overcast sky that's static when you could have the sexy Unreal tufts of cloud? Tufts, puffs, puffs, puffs. Oh, I'm confused now. Have those nice clouds scudding by, um, and there's a chance to use that word, which doesn't often get used. Um, so, not ideal for for skies unless you, you know. And I'd say it's a way to save space compared to nicer ways to do it. But actually, this just adds a whole lot more memory size as I come on to. Anyway, uh, but the principles are the same, and it may be more useful for getting. Well, I say getting the tree line, but then again, that's better to do in a cylindrical if you're doing just the trees only. Anyway, right, I thought I'd say some things to clear things up. I've said some things, it's been more confusing, so I'll just move on. So I was talking about this thing, uh, the YPR mode, which stands for YPR, and uh, this allows lazy photographers to fix their errors. Um, so that's actually not bad. Um, yeah, I mean, good enough for the purposes of uh, of what we're doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, the ground is bumpy where I took the shot. That'll do. Sorted. Um, I don't care much about the bottom of this. I'm not using it, you know. If you have a map where at the top of the mountain looking down, this ain't going to work for you anyway. You really want just this area to work with a bit more in case you get a little peak by mistake. But the more you look down at the skybox, the less it look, it, less good it looks, and mine don't look good to start off with. So, uh, I wonder if I can go. B oh, no, if I go back to cubic, it's going to just reset everything. So I'm going to have to burn a spherical one. Output size recommended 4096 by 8192. It lied last time I went with those sizes. Maximum size, sorry, maximum size. Uh, you see the kind of stuff you can get with full frame pictures. It's something to think about it. Oh, well, it's not all that big. Uh, do I want to burn that one? I mean, that's going to be big. 
does start to make things slow down and stop. So let's go for high. I'm going to save this because I just got a feeling it's going to, that'll do, just going to crap out because that's what things do. I mean you're working with big amounts of data, I can sort of sympathise. Um, the, the, some of this stuff looks really clever, oh with the source images, I'm, uh, but I haven't got to the bottom of it yet. So let's save panoramic image, DPI is arbitrary for our purposes, TIFF is not great. Yeah, I'd suggest Photoshop, but then you get that error. Let's just go. I'm going to put spherical. And if you press return, it defaults to reset like that. So, yeah, they don't have somebody doing the UI. Bad allocation. So, in Panaweaver speak, that means I run out of memory. So, I'm going to come back with that saved. Hello again. So, I'd like practice some of this stuff. I've done it once already and still I'm getting bogged down in, uh, in crap basically. So we're in Photoshop and here's our, whoa a little too far, our panorama. It's not hyper high resolution I've got to say. Um, it's basically fine so this is Bel Air Park in West Dulwich. Look there's the offending thing. Um, it promised me an 8192 by 496 and that's what I've got. So I've got this thing, when I'm tweaking bits near the edge I use the offset filter and I want it to offset by that amount. So that basically moves the problematic bit to there. I don't know why that crept out, but crap out it did. Uh, basic clone brush is fine, there's not a huge, there's no problems with lighting um, <clears throat> pardon me. Let's see if I can just do a quick fix. It doesn't have to be right, just has to look unobtrusive. I don't know quite where I'm going with this. None of those helped. There's a downward curve. So, uh, Mm. Brightness isn't quite matched. Not bad. I want to get rid of distracting stuff. Uh, like you. Apologies. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Uh, this is not a Photoshop tutorial, thank God. This is probably not how to do it, but this is how I do it. I've got some low flow. That sounds deeper than it was meant to be. Got low flow. Good enough, not distracting. Birds can go. I don't know why I'm bothering too much. I mean, this is all about the sky after all, um, but it might make for a nice tree line. What I could do, <coughs> I think I was saying earlier, is come back to this and make a cylindrical projection and just mask off the tree line to mask out the sky entirely and uh, I've done that in another example I can show you that in a minute but easier to do this now than later and you can go doo, doo, doo. I was also thinking about how to do a good <coughs> wood in Unreal. There was a map I was looking to convert which had a wooded area at the outside. And it's very hard to get the tree density you need without terrible performance, even with the, uh, what do you call them, billboards. So, uh, and I think a combination of a basic picture like this with a few layers of masked trees in a row and then some actual trees might actually create the necessary illusion of both being 3D but also having an, a very high density. Certainly when looking at the cornea eye. Uh, I think there's a lake there, I don't think it was there before. Uh, right, so I'm not going to do the edges just yet. I want to get rid of crap like that without introducing 
More crap. Let's find that plane while we're at it. Tell you what, I'm going to time lapse the rest of this. You've seen the basic principle. Right, well that's good enough for our purposes, so I'm going to save that as a Photoshop file. Um, and I've got a theory, so I'm going to jump into the editor now. This is just a test level, which may become another level. Um, and up here I've got the some skybox textures. So here's one I made earlier. And this is an overcast day in Southwold. I think I showed you the source material a couple of chats ago. Uh, I did a lot of work in Photoshop, put in a sort of a plain wash there. Um, and uh, it's actually disappointing on several levels. Uh, I haven't quite pinned down why, but it could have been the excessive Photoshopping or the conversion from one format to another, or so on and so forth. Um, and so this was made from a cube map, which I was talking about, which essentially is. Uh, six different faces of 2048 by 2048 in the case that I chose. I thought that was a reasonable enough resolution. It doesn't quite have that look, but there we go. And so we go, 2048 by 2048 by 6, and doesn't seem to be applying any compression to it, so that's basically 32 megs. Oh, I didn't want MIPS, so they can go. I asked for no MIPS. Uh, or did I want MIPS? Well, it's just a backdrop, so that should make it look better. Okay, well I guess it did. Maybe? Maybe. I'd better tell the person I gave that to to make that fix. Um, yeah, okay, that's now what it should be. That's a better size because there was this one I got from a marketplace a long, long time ago. I use it for my gatehouse map. Um, it's an HDR one, which is nice. But that's exactly the same size. Um, and that's actually a 512 by 512 by 6 cube map. Uh, I guess multiple versions of it because it's HDR or bigger versions of it. Um, but it was imported at a smaller size. So I was confused whether that was much smaller in size than my other one. They're now the same size, so pff, I don't know. But that's actually a better result. So, okay. I'm going to go back to what I was doing. So we've saved that. Um, I was wondering if I could import that directly into Unreal. That would be nice, but everything I've read says, nope, cube maps are the way. Um, and so the importers of the cube map, well, I'll come back to that. So I'm going to go to my Pano Weaver, and rather than using that directly, what I have to do is to close that and open the same thing from the one I saved. But I'm going to uh, open import panoramic image, this thing we just saved, which is not in that directory. It's in this directory. And did I save it the same thing? I surely did. So let's see what happens. Going to crap out. No, it's not. So this looks... Okay, did I miss a bit there? Looks like I maybe missed a bit. That, uh, well, that's... Wait, what's that? What's that? This is not the tweaked... What the hell? Oh, I saved it. I saved it. I saved it as a Photoshop. Ah, the washing's ready. Um, does it load Photoshops? Mm, sorry to span around like this. Okay, so photo I have to save it at TIFF. Grumble, grumble. Maybe there was some licensing reason. I don't know. Uh, TIFF. Spherical. Let's put in a different. Edited. Oh, sexy old school. Um, right. Edited. Is it going to crap out? So, uh, yeah, the washing's still ready. Um, right. Now I get the option to convert to a cube app. 
So that was the long-winded way to fix the horizon level and do some photoshopping. I could, done the, I could do the photoshopping at the next stage, uh, it's just a little bit trickier given the extra distortions you get with this format. Because it's all blah, 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 blah. Only the horizon is undistorted, everything else I think gets a, a tweak. So that is the cube map. That's black because there's no information below there because I was only going to there with my shots. And that would just be like tripod and baby and grass and it's not really going to help anybody. Uh, so that is that. So hopefully, come on, I'm going to save the project something else because that does, I think, keep the cube map. And let's try and save this. As, yeah, uh, cube. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Oh, it worked. I shouldn't be so surprised. Uh, so, Pano Cube. Doink. So, there is our cube map, right? So, we'll just load that into Unreal and everything's fine. Because, you know. No, it's not fine. Because, uh, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, creating cube maps. So here we go with the madness of the Unreal slash NVIDIA cube maps. Um, you've got to produce it in this format, where that's the x-axis, y-axis, no, z-axis. And you've got to rotate them in these clever ways. Uh, you can't just do that, which is the sort of more human readable one. Um, so it's up to us to get it in the right format. Now, there are some NVIDIA tools we're told about, and they have a script and this script is the cube app shuffler, which will produce it in the right format. Okay, so that's going to be screwed then. What the hell size is that? Uh, I need to just... A? Eh? Uh, that does seem... Right. 1, 5, 6, 4, 8 divided by 6. 2, 6, 8. That is... That is a cube. Okay, anyway, so what you have to do is produce the same thing, but I want it to be 2048 rather than some random size. Uh, and I need to reshuffle it. And this is, uh, well, also rotating things arbitrarily. Uh, and anyway, I spent a long time making an action to do this for me automatically. And I'm going to close everything else because it's not a very well written action. So fingers crossed, this will now reshuffle this. In the format I need. So behold, the power of Photoshop actions. Uh, it's very exciting. I'm very excited. It seems to be working so far. And there we go. So that is an Unreal cube map. Behold the beauty and the simplicity. This last cube might be the wrong way around, but you know what? I don't think it's going to matter in this case. Um, so we'll save that. And this surely is the way, but uh, you then have to save it in a special format for it to be recognised as a cube map. Uh, to the right thing, so let's say Bella Park Overcast cube map. And I'm going to save it. And here we get NVIDIA's options. Now this is what I left it last time. This is apparently the format you want. So it needs uh, RGB with alpha. I don't know why the alpha is not doing anything with it. I mean, it's a cube map, there's zero need for it, but apparently it's that one, not that one. 32 bits per pixel, unsigned. Is that right? Yeah. Um, you want it to be saved as a cube map, not a 2D texture. And no MIP maps. Uh, that didn't carry across into Unreal. And, uh, and there we go. And you know what? I think we've now reached the end of the line. This is now going to go into Unreal, so I'm very excited. I hope this didn't take too long to get this point. I know it did. Skybox Textures Import. Panorama, Bella Park. Yeah, come on, you can do it. Oh, I forgot to say, this takes for fucking ever. Pardon my French. So, um, I guess I'm going to uh, cut or time lapse or something. Um, I mean, possibly a minute or two. Uh, yeah. Don't know why. There we go. Uh, I'll be back. As they say. Boom! And here it is, inside Unreal. Amazing. Uh, not amazing at all. So I'm going to apply that same fix, currently 32 meg. I want to take it, take out the mip maps, which are 
the low resolution, resolution copies, the sort of cascade of low resolution copies for displaying things further away. And so it's become sharper. Um, I guess you lose a bit of aliasing, do you? I don't know. Um, but that essentially is, uh, is what we want, I think. And it's quite a nice resolution. Shouldn't look too shoddy on um, current generation stuff. I mean, it's not going to be as beautiful as that. So here's a new level. What I'm going to do to get it in, uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Pow! There is some fog somewhere. That looks like oh, where's what the what the devil? So atmospheric fog, light source. Oh, okay. I hadn't really played around with this. So light source is like a it's like a directional light as well as a sun. Uh, I don't. I I hesitate to delete this. But I'm going to. So there's no lighting whatsoever. And there's this, what the, oh, let's delete everything. Okay, that was perhaps not the most uh, intelligent idea I had. Let's just get some lighting in. Um, oh yes, but no, we can do a skylight. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's find, uh, no, it's in the engine. Uh, yeah, so that thing I just deleted was uh, somewhere here. Oh god, right. Engine sky. So, sky sphere. Pow! Is essentially what we had at the beginning. This is a simple version of it. It's just a sphere. It's got a material. So my next port of call is to make a material. So the skybox textures we had loaded in our new texture, but we hadn't yet made a material for it. So I'm going to... Uh, this one. Create a material instance. Skyfield uh, Bel Air overcast. I'm going to put my town on the map. Um, right. Let's find the texture for it. Let's go back to this and we'll say I'd like to use that one, please. And the contrast a bit off, but that is your usable. Oh, that's not bad. Um, material. I. I'd like to lighten that a bit, and that's quite easy to do. Should be easy to do. You've got various things you can tweak. Oh god, it might take forever. Uh, yeah, it took a long time to import this. Oh my god, don't. It's gonna. Oh, I'm gonna come back to you. Okay, didn't take quite as long as I feared. The lower the value, the uh, so that's sort of the gamma value. The higher the gamma value, the lighter it is, and the mid tones kind of thing. You can fiddle with other things. Uh, probably should have been brightness curve rather than RGB curve. I don't know the difference. Oh, I guess maybe one doesn't do the alpha or... So I don't know, don't care. Right. Done. Save. Uh, so the sky thing, Bob, we now have a material for that, which goes in there. Kazam! Chapeau! Boom! That's not bad. Not bad. Now you'll notice that everything in the level, let's put something in the level, let's find starter materials, let's put in a nice uh, props, let's put in a nice chair or something, uh, and a few more. Uh, let's keep the light for now. Okay, so there's a bit of a problem, we have that bright sky and that material I went over before, but let's just have a quick look. This is the master material. Um, you've got this fancy down thing where your cube map there, that's a parameter, but it's, uh, oh, param cube. But if it wasn't the parameter, it would be texture sample parameter. Uh, well, maybe it's always a parameter. Uh, I, that works. Um, you've got this reflection vector input data, is that? Oh, custom world normal. Oh, you know what? I found this somewhere and just copy it. Uh, you need to make sure the material is unlit. I've got to say, uh, surface and opaque is standard. Uh, Two-sided doesn't have to be. Um, will be marginally quicker if it's not. There's probably a reason that was two-sided, but I forget what it was. So, 
right let's not mess with anything um, okay so skylight I'm interested to find because direction light is a is a way to get um, okay skylight is a way to to get a nice directional source like the Sun but overcast days there may be a small element of that but you're really looking at skylights source type here's the skylight specified cube map and here's where it gets very neat the fact we've done a, a cube map um, even if we don't use it as the skybox this can be used to make a skylight which will light the scene in theory I as if it was in that cube so we're going to get a nice diffuse light because there's lots of white in that sort of hemisphere um, if you were to choose a different cube map well it would look different and you'd get a directional aspect to that because that must be coming from over there um, or is it? Oh, I don't know but uh, have I got any other cube maps? well this one's very similar can we see a difference change between the two? yeah a little bit so um, and there might be a little green component coming from the side so this really can give very very accurate realistic lighting and it should also blend in the scene uh, so as long as you haven't modified the brightness of your sky everything else should be lit appropriately um, so I'm quite pleased with that now there's just one other thing I'm going to show you I talked about making a cylindrical mapping and here's something I produced with a cylindrical mapping I wasn't interested in the sky um, and I could potentially use that instead of the tree line but keep the sky higher. I there's a few options you could um, where are we? You could maybe just delete the trees and extend the sky down and make it go a bit further down um, so you could use another backdrop with it but I'm going to try using this texture which has been I turned into a material there is a material um, I also made a few stock shapes for my skybox there's a full cylinder which is this with another default there I've got half cylinders so for my Pankeesi map I've got one of those on both sides so these are sort of backdrop stuff um, they don't look as pretty or as future-proofed or as detailed as meshes uh, but they're dead easy and they're dead quick to render um, or they're just a bit masked that's all so let's swap in my Brockwell Park material let's see so you could um, let's see so the sky sphere let's make it a hundred times bigger this is an important part of it there's no apparent change but it means that everything can be pushed out further let's make that uh, 90 oh yeah so that's not going to be done uh, location so that's a little high because it's all scale let's try um, minus a thousand minus ten thousand so just a little tweak I mean that was actually up a hill so I suppose that the way there may be the other skybox showing through let's take that off a second uh, so there's a little bit of overlap um, but there you can sort of mix and match so if I was to if I were to tweak the Bel Air Park bit with the we have sky if I was to tweak that to bring that sky down just cloning it or similar um, you can then mix and match it with a different tree line and you get a f there's some flaws but you get a fairly reasonable um, skybox now it's it's hard to judge it without stuff obscuring it to make it look more natural um, it's not really doing the business but that could uh, you know that might pass muster for, for a few things and you know one thing to do is maybe to edit out the nearer trees and so on something else to do possibly uh, should require me to edit the original is when you've got these sort of cylindrical materials is to actually repeat them so have them repeated twice in the in the 360 degrees so that everything becomes smaller and looks further away the downside is that if you look the, you know you can see that in the level you can notice that it's a, a duplicate but you could maybe double it up and then clone things around so it doesn't look like a direct copy and maybe not have those in there so the things I think the um, with these mountains 
uh, not those ones, but you get the just these ones. I don't know why I got alpha there. Um, these ones I just had a bit there which I cloned across because I wanted to make that relatively small that variation and and uh, you know you could do the same with any skybox just double it in size and clone it across selectively it's quite hard to do without it looking like it's cloned I mean you can see similarities can't you um, to make it appear further away to have twice as much material going round means it looks twice as far away or similar so that's the start but I might do that technique to this one so it's it appears further away because I want all my stuff in the meantime in the middle in the actual level to appear nearer so I ramble on again but that's the gist of that that kind of worked um, be nice to have some kind of movement I mean you could separately get a cloud layer that moves across that's quite old school uh, but if you're just playing the level and that's not the main concern that would pass muster and the skylight actor um, which I think also is obscured occluded if you're inside you don't get the effect of that inside buildings and so on um, that gives you this nice photorealistic uh, output. Anyway, there we go. Bye-bye.